What's up YouTube, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to take a look at a SQL interview question asked during Spotify, data scientist, data analyst, machine learning engineer interviews, or anything similar. Spotify has a lot of data-driven roles, great place to be, so let's get into the question. This one's called Artists of the Decade and Marketers Medium on Stratastretch.com, which is a platform where we're going to be able to run our code against test cases to see if it would be accepted during an interview. It's company tag for Spotify, as I said, and we have a table called Billboard Top 100 Year End Charts. So we have chart data, and our task is to find the number of times an artist has been on the Billboard Top 100 in the past 10 years. Output the result alongside the artist's name and order records based on the founded count in descending order. On the found count, I guess. It's going to be our task. We have this input table which we can preview here. So we have six fields in here. First one's going to be year, which is just going to be the chart year. These are yearly charts, just the top up 100 across the entire year. We have the rank of this specific track, the group name, which is going to include featuring artists, as is the case here with this track, Canadian Sunset, which includes Eddie Haywood and Hugo Winterhalter. And the next field artist is going to be propagated for each artist in that group. So if we're going to sum it up for Eddie Haywood, we're going to have all tracks that he's featuring on or yeah, he's the original artist on. So everywhere someone contributes is going to be recorded here as one row in here. And we also have the track title and an ID for that, for that entry. That's it. Pretty simple instructions. We're just going to find the number of times each artist has been in the Billboard Top 100 in the last 10 years. They could be in there with several tracks, as is probably the case with Elvis right here, for example. And we just want to output the artist's name, how many times they showed up in the Top 100 charts in the last 10 years, and then order it descendingly based on that count. So we're going to have the artist on top that appears most in the top 100 charts in the last 10 years. So let's, let's get started on that. So we can also preview our solution or expected output and it's going to have artist and that count in here. So we're going to go ahead and select artist and this should be a count since we're trying to count up how many times they showed up in, in the charts in the past 10 years. So we're just going to count star for now, we're just going to count entries since each track should be one entry or one row and that should give us that count. We're going to call it count 10 years as in the expected output and we're selecting that from this table name which is too long for me to spell so I'm just going to copy paste it here. And since we're counting up using an aggregate function, we also need to specify what we're grouping that by. In this case, artists, we want to sum up, not sum up, we want to count the number of entries in the top 100 charts per artist, not for the entire table. That's why we're using group by artist here. And that, sh that code should already be running. Let's try that and see what we get. We do get a count per artist and we have Ray Charles showing up in there 10 times, but Ray Charles probably hasn't been active in the past 10 years. We still need to put that filter in there and that's what we're going to do right now. We also need to keep in mind that we should order the record space on the founded, on the found count in descending order. I mean, we could do that right now, just so that we don't forget we're going to order by this count. We can just specify two to say we're going to order by the second column in descending order. Let's see if that works. So this should be the best artist of all time, judging by that method, Elvis Presley and Madonna, because we didn't filter on the last 10 years yet. So let's get into that by introducing a where clause. So we just need to somehow take that year that we have and restrict it to the last 10 years. Now since we are in 2021, as 
I'm recording this, I could just go ahead and say where year is greater than 2011 or greater or equal to 2011 since it's going to include 2011, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. It should be 10 years and that should totally work for now. And if we look at the five first rows, which are always included in the expected output, that would be the correct solution for now. But as soon as the year switches over to 2022, this wouldn't work anymore because it would include the last 11 years. Since 2011 wouldn't be in the last 10 years anymore, it would be incorrect. So we need to change it up to be more dynamic and flexible and yeah, that's, that's probably something you should keep in mind whenever you're interviewing. Always think about these edge cases and whether your solution would work at the current moment or whenever you would run this. So, so because this is quite static and only works for being in the year 2021, we need to change it up, make it a bit more flexible and dynamic to work with any year we're running this code in. So instead of hard coding the year filter to be greater or equal to 2011, we're gonna extract the year from the current date and see whether there's a 10 year difference at max to the chart year we're looking at. So I think it's better to just write that out. We're gonna use current date, which is a set field that always returns the current date completely. So it might be 10th of August, 2021. And since we're interested in the year only really, I'm gonna extract the year from that by using the date part function in PostgreSQL. Might be slightly different, I think there's date format for MySQL, but it's the same concept. We're just trying to extract the year number from the current date, which this part is gonna give us, and then see if there's a 10 year difference or less to the chart you were looking at. Year. All right. Let's run that code to make sure it works. It does. And what we're doing here is we're comparing the current year in in this case of recording, it would be 2021. And then we're subtracting year, let's get, let's get the preview of the data here maybe. And then, yeah, let's say we have 2015 as the current top 100 billboard chart year. So we're gonna subtract 2015 from 2021, it's gonna be six. Six is smaller than or equal to 10, so it's gonna be included in our analysis. It will be in the last 10 years. Now, if we had 2010 in here, it would be a 11 year difference. And hence, this filter would throw it out. 11 is greater than 10 and not smaller or equal to 10. And that's why it wouldn't be included. Now, if the current year was 2025 and we were comparing that to 2020, the year difference would be five and it would be included again. And this way it works for any year you're running this analysis in. And that's pretty much it for that question. This just allows us to dynamically look at the last 10 years. We already took care of everything else. So if we check that solution, it's gonna be accepted. Now that's pretty much it for that problem. If you wanna practice this question, head on over to startersearch.com with my sponsored link in the description below and search for the problem. There are a lot more company tagged problems for Spotify and other companies so you're able to browse by company quite easily and prepare for these interviews. Keep in mind that SQL is just gonna be one portion of your interview at Spotify. Make sure to prepare for stats, A-B testing and um, Python as well, which you can also do on stratasearch.com by just switching to Python here. There are also non-coding questions on that platform, so it's really a one-stop go for all your data science interview preparation needs. That's gonna be it for me. See you in another one. Bye.